Welcome to today's Brain Boost video. So today we're going to be talking about genetic drift and all things associated to it. So let's just jump right into the video. So what exactly is genetic drift? Uh, simply put, it's just the change in allelic frequencies due to chance events. Okay, so there's different types of genetic drift that we're going to get into today which are population bottleneck and founder effect, but we'll look at that in a bit. But let's start with this image here. So this image of these jars with beads in them, uh, this is basically a representation of, you know, real life species and what occurs. So what exactly happens here? So we have chance events occurring, okay? Um, and what it does is that it changes the ratios of our allelic frequencies in the population. So as you can see, we have different ratios of red and blue beads in these jars. And eventually, if you keep looking to the right, you see the jar ends up completely being blue beads, right? So this does happen in real life as well. Like, for example, if we had a field of flowers that were half red and half blue, just like this jar of beads, and this field happened to be stomping grounds for animals and they stomped on a bunch of red ones, right? By chance, completely by chance. Now we have a higher ratio of blue to red, right? And the blue flowers are going to keep reproducing because there's more of them. So you're going to see more blue flowers than red. Um, and eventually maybe another round of stomping occurs and more red flowers keep getting eliminated and you end up with just a full field of blue flowers just like you end up with this jar of completely blue beads so what happens that what that means is basically you can have chance events that occur that push an allele to be fixed okay so here our fixed allele is the blue allele because that's become the prominent one the one that's completely taken over Okay, so let's look at the first type of genetic drift mentioned, uh, population bottleneck. So essentially what happens here is we have a population that we'll call the parent population, as represented by the bottle of uh, yellow and blue beads. And what happens is a bottlenecking event. So a bottlenecking event happens and it reduces the population drastically. So this is as if you were to take your bottle pour some of it out, some of the beads out into a glass, and then throw the bottle away with the remaining beads in there. So it drastically reduces your population, and this bottlenecking event could be absolutely anything really. It could be a disease, it could be climate change, um, and you're left with a certain amount of individuals left, and they're called the surviving individuals. And the surviving individuals are essentially the seed that is going to reboot this population in the future. The only uh, caveat with this is that your surviving population, uh, if it's, it's very small, and so it is at risk of extinction and lower genetic variability. So how does that happen? It's because when you only have a X amount of individuals left over in your population, they are only left to breed with each other to, in order to reboot this population, right? So if they are mating with one another, there is the possibility of inbreeding, which um, inbred individuals could either be stillborn and not even survive birth, or be sterile, or die at a young age, or possess disease. So they have lower genetic variability. Groups that are small, the surviving population that is small has lower genetic variability, technically, um, if it starts to reproduce, right? And so because of that, it's also at risk of extinction because of the lower genetic variability. Because if another chance event were to happen, another disease came around, in affected that population, they could possibly be carrying a disease or a, a gene that would 
you know, wipe out the whole population and they wouldn't be able to survive. So they are not only lower in genetic variability, but they can also, they're also susceptible to extinction. Okay, so let's talk about the other example or the other instance of genetic drift known as founder effect. So in founder effect, what happens here is, let's say we have a large group, we'll call it the mother group, and a portion of this group essentially branches off and goes and creates a new colony elsewhere. And their genetic makeup may be different from the mother group or the original group. So if we look at this image that I have here, we'll call this left side image, this blob of blue and red dots, the mother group, okay? We have a lot of individuals and you see a lot of red and a lot of blue, okay? So there's a lot of variability in terms of genetics and there's a lot of individuals, right? So let's say a group of, a portion of this mother group branches off, as you can see here in the red at the top, they branch off of the original to colonize another area. So this is what humans actually do in history. We've seen this, you know, Europeans, a certain number of them branch off and colonize other areas in the world, right? Now, in this case for humans, when they do go off and colonize another area, they, they may have alleles, they may possess alleles in their genetics that could have a negative impact. And because they were originally living, you know, because their population was originally living in a, a mother group, a group that was large and had a lot of genetic variability, such as the one on the left here, the very left, their genetics may have almost been hidden, if you will, right? If you have a gene that, you know, it needs to be homozygous for it to be expressed, but you're in a genetically variable group, then technically you will see a lot of heterozygosity. There's a lot of um, gene variability, so it won't be expressed and you won't see um, the genetic defect or the illness that that gene or that allele may entail. But the second you have a few individuals that branch off, such as up here, they branch off and go off on their own and start to mate and reproduce, the chances of two or more individuals having these alleles that have a negative impact are much higher because it's a smaller group. And so the chances of that negatively impact impacting gene being passed on to offspring is also higher because we're starting with such a small group of individuals. So as you can see here, it goes from this red group here at the top and you see two blue dots in the second image there in the middle and we'll call the two blue dots our diseased individuals if you will so the two blue dots are offspring for example that end up having uh, end up expressing the allele that is negatively impacting them and then through time they keep mating with each other these individuals because they are the only group that colonize this area so they're mating with each other and in the bottom here eventually they all become blue, as you can see. So a very good example of this is the Amish people. Um, they have their origins in Europe, but they colonized in the States. And Amish people tend to see a lot of health issues due to their quote unquote inbreeding or just mating with one another because they are such a small group that has branched off of their mother group. So the chances of inbreeding is a lot higher and therefore the chances of this negatively impacting allele kind of being expressed or revealing itself is also a lot higher. So that is the gist of genetic drift. Um, be sure to like this video and comment any questions that you have and subscribe to the channel for more videos and we'll catch you in the next one.